Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special bonus episode of the Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast. How are you doing, Frank? Good, Darren. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I think we uh, we decided the other day that we'd have a little break in between uh, reviewing all the movies for the Cool Crew Summers episodes and just duck out and do um, another little quickfire bonus episode. This time we're going to do Underwater Terrors 2. We had quite a few people suggesting movies um, when we did the last Underwater Terrors episode uh, that we omitted. And, you know, we always said that we'd come back and revisit this. And it's, it's been a really popular episode for us, both on YouTube and on the podcast. So we thought we'd regroup and, and come up with 10 more Underwater Terrors. So why don't you kick things off, Frank? Sure. So my first one is not really considered, uh, it's not underwater per se. It's more on top of water and it's not really a movie. It's part of an, an anthology. It's The Raft from Creepshow 2. The birds swim faster! The bird! Come on! Swim faster! Randy, come on! Randy, what is your problem, man? Oh, yeah. Come on, help me get her up here. Swim! Swim! Swim faster! Swim! Come on, the bird! Come on. So, dealing with that big oil slick that's in the middle of the lake with these college uh, people are swimming out to this this raft, but there's that oil slick that wants to eat them. Yes, Uh, I remember. I think that was a great, great episode uh, to Creepshow 2. You know, the girl's playing with it with her cigarette, and it just comes up and sucks her in. And uh, sucks. They start, they start sucking everybody in. So in the meantime, if you're going to get sucked in or you think you're going to die by some creature, what do you do? You sexually assault somebody sleeping on your raft in the meantime. <laughs> you have to remind me. It's a lot. It's probably 20-odd years since I've seen this movie. So what? It, what is it that ex- actually happens? I do remember the closing shot where it just leaps out of the water like a giant blanket and, and devours them. somebody. Yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah. Then it burps yeah, at the yeah. end. Uh, so I guess these four college kids are going to a lake um, on spring break and they swim out to this raft and they see an oil slick that looks kind of weird it's like perfectly shaped and they can see pieces of feathers in it and this one girl sticks her cigarette in the oil slick and part of the slick shoots up, grabs her arm, pulls her in starts ripping her flesh off you know, as she's screaming and one by one, they're all getting devoured by this slick. <laughs> I, we don't know what it is. You know, one guy uh, thinks that he could swim faster than this thing back to shore. Well, the oil slick or whatever it is can go through the, the I guess, the slots of the raft, grabbed onto his, his foot and pulled him through and separated where his foot's looking above his head and the other one's facing down. You know, and pulled him right through. That, Gave him yeah. the splits. The, the one girl jumped on this other kid, and uh, he's, he's holding her up. They think it's safe. You know, they're trying to keep watch overnight. She passes out asleep. Uh, so what does he do? He lifts up her shirt and decides to fondle her a little bit. And uh, she turns over, and the slick is on her face, ripping her face off. Pull her in the water. Yeah, I remember. And then, like you said, he swims to shore, thinking he got away, and then just blankets over him and pulls him back in, and it burps. And the last, it, yeah. And the last shot we see is no swimming, <laughs> covered by the trees. Yeah. Isn't it like a toxic waste or something? I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 no. As as the guy said in there, I think his name is Ponch, the guy from Chips. Uh, <laughs> was he in the movie? No, it's a fucking young college kid. <laughs> Eric uh, Estrada. Yeah, Eric Estrada's in it. Attention all units. Chips will return in a moment. No, it's... Uh, it's. They said it's too perfectly round, and, and uh, you know, I always thought it was nice. Uh, it was, it was kind of weird, it, it, you know, because you're out there being isolated with this thing circling you. That's definitely quicker than you, as most of sea terrors are men as we said in our last uh, episode men don't belong in the water do we they just no don't. no no <laughs> it's, it's everything yeah. can kill you in it and and that kind of segues nicely into my first one which is 
2010's The Reef. Now, jo- Joanna from Canada, she um, she made a comment on one of our um, uh, on our last episode, Underwater Terrors, and said, you know, you missed off The Reef. Now, we didn't miss it off. We just didn't have time to fit it in. There's, there's still... Look, we could do three or four episodes of this stuff. Mm. When you think about things that lie underwater, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a creature. It could be anything. Um, there is, there's lots of, of, of different titles that we can cover. But yeah, I, uh, specifically for Joanna from Canada, I watched The Reef again this morning because I haven't seen it for, since it came out. And it's a it's an Australian movie um, directed by uh, Andrew Trauke, who has a kind of fascination with concentrating on Australian creatures and critters and God knows what else. Things he also directed you. Blackwater... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he also directed Blackwater, um, which was I think it's about fifteen years ago that movie, the, the crocodile movie, and also Blackwater Abyss a couple of about a year ago I think, which I quite enjoyed. Just the one in the when they're in those kind of underground caves and the, the crocs are in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the moment, he's just about to start shooting the Reef Two, which is called the Reef Stalk. Which sounds interesting. If it's as good as The Reef, which The Reef is really good. I mean, The Reef has an 80% Rotten Tomatoes score, but strangely, just a 41% audience score with that, which I find really odd. But, you know, it's these four people who go out with on, on a boat with the boat's captain... Um, they get it's set in Australia, the, the, near the Great Barrier Reef. The boat gets turned over, and they are quite far out. And there's great whites out in the water with them. Uh, they decide to try and kick their way to the nearest sort of. There's, there's a kind of island that they're, they're trying to make it to. There's one sequence in there which is absolutely terrifying. Whereas the four of them are kind of all sort of back to back in the water, huddled together. Mm. Keeping lookout as they're as they're floating aw- uh, along, and this great white circling around them. I think it's um it's the, the first male character gets uh, gets his leg bitten off, and you just sort of slowly watch him kind of die in front of everybody and slowly get pulled under, and all the not just the sharks are feeding on him, but the fish and everything are just having a frenzy around him. There's some really you know quite uncomfortable moments in this movie. And it's it's kind of it's based on a true story as well, uh, you know, and it, it doesn't end well. I think one girl does survive, but the rest of them just all get kind of gobbled up in horrible ways, and you know, there's no upside to it at all when it ends. And that's probably why there was no. It, it's a re, it's, it's kind of a reconstruction of a true event, and it's probably why the audience were a little down on it because it's not an uplifting ending whatsoever. So I'm yeah, I'm kind of you know, the movie took like five weeks to to shoot. And I think you did a really good job with it. I think it's a really tense and kind of unsettling watch. I, I agree. I, when I first watched uh, The Reef, you know, anytime you hear something about Shark, you're thinking, you know, okay, it's trying to be another Jaws ripoff. But I actually enjoyed The Reef. I, I thought it was, uh, there's a lot of tension in that movie. There's a lot of, you know, like you said, it's un- unsettling. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, I think The Reef deserves to be on a list. Yeah, and also the, it's really cool the fact that they they didn't, at any point use any sort of I think there's maybe one or two fin shots or something like that which are a kind of uh, animatronics or whatever but for the most part it's actual live shark footage so yeah I think I think they did a great it's probably because they didn't want to go through the hell that Spielberg went through with his bloody clockwork Bruce so yeah so the reef is my first entry on underwater terrors too what's next so uh, next on my list number two now this wasn't released out in the U.S., but this might have been released. It was definitely over, released over there in Europe, uh, Western Europe. Have you ever heard of a movie called Sea Fever? Yes. It's an Irish film, right? It is. It has uh, uh, Connie Neal. I have it, but I've not watched it. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. So I won't tell you the whole thing about it. So basically, she was have... in, wasn't she in... Wasn't she in Nobody that I just watched last night? Yes. yes. She's... She, she, she is Bob's um, wife. Bob, Bob Odenkirk's wife. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Great and film. She's also the sister of Keanu Reeves in uh, Devil in the Devil's Advocate. That's right. Yeah, but we're we're not here talking about the devil and, and, and incest. Uh, we're <laughs> we're going to be talking about Sea Fever, uh, which deals with you know uh, this this student is looking for uh, behavioral patterns of sea creatures and, and funguses. And goes on board a ship of uh, fishermen where they discover what they think is a new organism of squid. Um, they try to pull it up. Uh, one guy gets his uh, his hand cut on a rope 
and organisms really enter him and they enter different parts of the ship. They enter the water filtration system. But there's one part of this movie that I know, Darren, you're going to watch it where something bursts out of a person (laughs) and all these little organisms uh, start going around. So basically it's sea creature infections. Um, Is it like the end of uh, Human Eyes from the Deep? Nothing like that. No, no. <laughs> there's, there's, these things do not want to rip your clothes off. Okay, there's, there's no fish fucking in it this time. No, there's no fish fucking. <laughs> so they're just infecting, you know, people on board. And the way you test for these things is you shine a light, you see if they glow because they're bioluminescent. And it's almost like one of those things where the paranoia sets in. Okay, who's infected? Just imagine 28 days later on a ship. But it's not okay. a vi- it's not a virus. It's an organism, uh, and right. any open cut. Oh, this sounds good. Yeah, any open cut and any any way it gets through to you, whether through the eyes or if you drink it, you know, you're basically infected. Is it you have like to cabin fever, away. maybe. Yeah, I would. Okay, cabin fever on a boat. So a cabin on a boat. We'll say that. <laughs> but yeah, I had to put sea fever. In. I just watched it, and I was like, this is a good concept. Um, and as we talk about with, with dealing with the sea, we still don't know what the hell's in it, do we? There's still a lot of things no. we haven't discovered yet. Uh, uh, just, just, I just try and stay away from it as much as possible. Yeah, yeah I'm worried about the Amazon. If you swim in the Amazon, they got that thing that could swim up your, your uh, penis hole and <laughs> get hooked right in. So, yeah, I'm staying away oh. from the Amazon. Okay, so what's your next penis hole movie you're going to be talking about? <laughs> Well, and just a reminder, folks, that we 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 do these kind of um, these bonus episodes, these quick fire episodes, without kind of conferring with each other at all. We go away, we pick five movies each, and then we just come back and talk about them. So this is completely unscripted, off the cuff. Um, I have no idea what Frank's choices are, and he has no idea what mine are. But yeah, my next one, I've got. Let me just decide what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do Piranha, the remake, 2010. Alexander Arja. Um, one of my favourite horror directors who seems to have gone off the boil a little bit recently, but, you know, hopefully he'll come back with something big and decent. He did uh, High Tension, he did Hills of Eyes, the remake of the Hills of Eyes, he then did uh, Piranha, we've also had Crawl from him as well. But the Piranha remake, I'm a huge fan of the 1978 Piranha, as we all know, and I really enjoyed the remake. I thought it was a really, it was a different sort of direction to the original whilst paying a lot of respect to it. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was more comedy. I don't know if the original had a lot of comedy in it. This has even more comedy in it. Uh, and I just thought there was some fabulous effects work in this film. Uh, particularly when those piranhas first start attacking, you know, you get all that chaos in that water park. Uh, there's people's faces getting ripped off. Jerry O'Connell's cock gets ripped off. Um, Richard Dreyfuss as well at the beginning is a, a kind of nod to, uh, to to Hooper in in Jaws. A really fun horror remake that deserved another, uh, you know, a sequel if you like. But when the sequel came along, it was absolutely terrible. So yeah, so so uh, nothing else much to say. I guess we've spoke about Piranha a lot on these episodes. Alexander Arja's 2010 Piranha, great remake. Really good fun. Was really cool in 3D as well. I'm not a big fan of 3D movies, but it seemed to work really well at the time. I know the fads died down now, but uh, yeah, one of those kind of movies that I'll always have a glance at when it's on the telly. Plenty of boobs. Yeah. <laughs> British ones too. <laughs> Kelly Brook. Uh, she's, she's, I remember her in another uh, C movie with uh, Billy Zane. Yeah, what was that called? Oh, I don't know. I don't care about the title. I was just looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isolation, yeah. whatever it's called. You know. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Some weird shit. Was, so, that, was he with or without wig in that film? I can't remember. Without. Without. He without, was, okay. He was uh, crowning at that time. <laughs> My next one doesn't have to deal with any animal whatsoever. Mine has to deal with a catastrophe at sea. And that's the 1972 classic, The Poseidon Adventure. You know what? I was going to pick this one. Ah, oh, it's a, such damn. a great movie, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Well, let's talk about it because what do we have here? We have probably an all star cast, don't we? I mean, any Absolutely. movie I think with Gene Hackman in it is going to be great. And we have Shelley Winters, Red Buttons, Ernest Bordenine. You know, the list goes on and on. Roddy McDow- uh, McDowell for those, you know, Peter Vincent from uh, Fright Night. 
So dealing with the SS Poseidon, you know, they're they're sailing from uh, New York. Grandpa Joe's in it, too. That's right. Grandpa Joe. <laughs> Willy Wonka and the Chalka Factor. <laughs> Midnight, New Year's Eve. The luxury liner SS Poseidon is struck by a 90-foot tidal wave and capsized. The Poseidon Adventure. Who will survive? Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, Red Buttons, Carol Lindley, Roddy McDowell, Stella Stevens, Shelley Winters. Now, 15 Academy Award winners lead you through fire, through smoke, through steam and rising water. Foot by foot, deck by deck, they climb to the bottom of the ship. Hold it! Do you know what a flash fire is? We're sinking and nothing's going to keep us from drowning. Keep moving. I told you I was going to get everybody out of here and damn it, I'm going to do it! This is the greatest escape adventure of our time. Irwin Allen's production of The Poseidon Adventure, a Ronald Neen film, rated PG. Deals with the, the SS Poseidon traveling, I think, from New York to Athens. It's a luxury mm-hmm. liner, right? It has everything you ever wanted. Well, it doesn't have a good stabilized system because a big tidal wave tips the fucker over. And yeah, but you've got that's because you've got Frank Drebin driving it. That's why. <laughs> 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 Leslie Nielsen, folks, is the captain in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't survive long. A lot of them don't survive long. <laughs> but the thing tips over. It, it's upside down. And Gene Hackman plays a reverend in this movie. And he's telling everybody that you, we have to go up. In order to get out, we have to go through the floor. So basically, they, they all go through these little, I guess, corridors of the, the ship trying to get out. And people are dying one by one, um, slowly, uh, throughout the movie. But it's, a, it's just a terrific thriller of something that's it's really scary. You know, being upside down in your ship, you know, and just waiting either for help or waiting for you to sink. So... Anytime the Poseidon Adventure is on. Now, the remake is terrible. I think it's awful. It doesn't hold the candle to the 72 version. Um, I know you're Russell, like, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, it has like Kurt Russell and uh, another one with Richard Dreyfus. Uh, it just still doesn't hold up. No, the original is so good. I mean, not not just the concept and and you know the way that the 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 actions choreographed and everything. It was a, it was just part of those. You know, those great 70s ensemble movies, the Irwin Allen disaster pictures, which there were quite a few of them. And, and you know, I've always thought about whether we should do um, an episode on, on these kind of ensemble disaster films, you know, because you, you've got things like uh, Earthquake, A Towering Inferno, When Time Airport. Ran Out, Meteor. There's loads of them, isn't Tons. there? And, and they're, all, they're all great fun. But Poseidon... The Poseidon and Towering Inferno have always been my favourites. And, you know, a lot of it is because of the, the conflict in these movies as well. That kind of relationship between Gene Hackman and Ernest Borgnine when they're at each other's throats all the time. And, you know, Gene Hackman, has to, he has to sacrifice himself to, you know, to basically prove that he was right all along. And there's that to horrible his scene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he he he's holding. He's trying to open that. Is it like a shaft entrance or something? He's holding. He's suspended in midair, turning. And he's that swinging wheel back and forth. There's hot steams blasting all over his hands at the same time. He's getting burnt while he's. That's just tremendous. What a great film. And, and you know, it, it, the uh, the movie on a four million dollar budget at the box office made 125 million. Wow. So and that's nearly. It's coming up to 50 years old as well. And, and I know of... Well, Gene's still with us. There's probably like four or five people in that movie that are at least have... Yeah, seasoned. Ernest Borgnine's dead. Shelley Winters is dead. I mean, Grandpa Joe went ages ago, didn't he, I think? Red <laughs> Buttons is dead. Yeah, you know, Roddy, Roddy McDowell's dead. unfortunately, yeah. yeah. You know, but it's... Uh, you know, I love The Poseidon Adventure. I will always watch it. Um, so what is your next uh, happy seafaring movie? <laughs> Mine is Return to the Poseidon Adventure. No, it's not. That, <laughs> <laughs> that was an awful film. That was an awful film. Uh, Raised in Titanic 2, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> Sink the <Payne>. Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to raise your Gene Hackman with Poseidon Adventure, and I'm going to offer you Crimson Tide. 
nothing can stop the tide. The LA Times says Crimson Tide is full throttle tension that squeezes out your every last breath. You repeat this order or I'll find somebody who will. CBS TV says it's taut, tense, and terrific. I'm assuming command of this ship. You're not assuming anything. And Siskel and Ebert give two thumbs up to the summer's most thrilling in your face smash hit. Lost Captain Ramsey in his stateroom. They're fueling our missiles now! Crimson Tide. Rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Uh, there's two um, two submarine movies which I absolutely love. One of them that came out only a couple of years ago, which is a terrific film, which I'm not going to talk about today because I'm going to save that for another Underwater Terrors episode. But Das Boot. Um, two. Yeah. No. No. It's not that one. No. No. This. This. This other one is a true story, which is is um, for another we'll, time. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. 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 A terrific 88% on Rotten Tomatoes with an 83% audience score. Denzel Washington, Gene Hackman, Viggo Mortensen, James Gandolfini, Jason Robards, huge cast. And it's, it kind of concerns this sort of... It's after the Cold War and there's this kind of Russian breakaway republic that are posing a bit of a nuclear threat. And so Denzel Bill Washington... Terry Coup, right? Well, this is what yeah, this is what what it leads to. But um, we end up with with uh, the USS Alabama. Uh, Gene Hackman's the captain, and I think his first officer's Denzel Washington. Hackman's a bit trigger happy. He's kind of like old school, and and Denzel Washington's got more of a conscience. And a uns- a scrambled message comes in that they can't quite decipher as as to whether they should launch the nuclear weapons or not. And Denzel Washington doesn't believe we should be doing, and Hackman does. He wants to do it. He wants to hit the button. But one can't do it without the other's consent. So Washington performs a coup on board the submarine, and it just has some of the most confrontational scenes in this film with these two. Really, I mean, there's nothing better than Gene Hackman getting angry. Gene Hackman shouting, swearing, banging his fist onto his hand and really going for it. You get it in Superman, you get it in Poseidon a lot, you get it in this tenfold. It's superb. And not a lot of people know, but Tarantino wrote a hell of a lot of the dialogue for this film, uncredited. Really tense thriller. Bruckheimer is, you know, Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson at the kind of highest point. And, yeah, a really exciting movie which is terrifying as well. Um, it's really tense, really quite scary, and just makes you wonder, what the hell? We've, you know, these two guys have got the, the keys to the nukes and, and they're, they're more intent on fucking destroying each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great movie. It's, it's basically a movie also about paranoia. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and Denzel's character is new to the team. You know, he's, uh... Yeah, I think it's one of his first postings in that role, isn't it? Yeah, he's also uh, not part of Gene Hackman's regular crew, so he's mm-hmm. a new guy. And yeah. uh, you know, Vigo, uh, who's in charge of, I guess, the the weapons on that submarine. You know, he also believes that no, we, you know, this is a last ditch effort. We have to wait until we get actually proof. It's it's a lot of things on being a sub. You don't know what's going on on the outside world except through radio, you know, yeah. or some yeah. kind of communication. You're basically for the lack of a better term, shooting blind if you shoot something off. And you could start a whole war accidentally. And I, trust me, I don't want to be in the water without <laughs> my head sticking up, let alone in something that can crush you with pressure and something that could blow you up. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a scary movie, it really is. But what's next? What have you got next, Frank? So mine is 1977's Testicles. I'm sorry, Tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> the old right. testicle. <laughs> That's a, it's nearly a fifty-year-old testicle. Uh, <laughs> Tentacles is a movie. You know, it's an Italian, one of these Italian-American with John Houston, Shelley Winters again. Shelley likes being in the water for some reason. I have no she idea does. Why. She could swim very well. Yeah, until the end. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bo Hopkins and and Henry Fonda dealing with this huge octopus. Each year, 10,000 tourists visit Ocean Beach. This summer, Ocean Beach has attracted something else. American International presents Tentacles. It slept until man disturbed it. Then it woke with a fury no man could control, rising from the ocean floor 
to bring destruction and death. Tentacles. A chilling tale of nature gone wild as two of the sea's deadliest enemies fight to the death. Starring John Huston, Shelley Winters, Bo Hopkins, Claude Aikens, and Henry Fonda. Tentacles. The most gripping suspense you will ever experience. Rated PG. Uh, goes after boats, going after s- swimmers, you know, ripping flesh off them, sucking the bone marrow out. I don't know if you ever saw this movie. Uh, I haven't. No, I haven't. Uh, it's 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 one of those corny fun movies where you're like, ah, oh, for Christ's sakes, okay, and, and some laughable moments. Um, it it did. The budget was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> And it made three million. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> take what you want. You know? You know? Yeah, exactly. That's not too bad, is it? You know. Yeah, it's just that you know they always thought. Look, put it this way: if a film cost seventy-five million dollars and made three hundred million, it would be a roaring success, wouldn't it? So, uh, sure, I'd consider that. <laughs> I consider it cool. It, you know, it, it, I consider it even more cool because it has a zero percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, so, you know, as this giant octopus is, is devouring people and ripping the backs of boats off and everything, you know, how does this octopus die? Well, Bo Hopkins has a secret weapon, two secret weapons, trained orcas. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so the trained orcas start going after this octopus and eventually kill him. But I put it on my list because, you know, we've had fish and everything on there or where you have you know organisms that you know if they get inside you microscopic they infect you we've had plenty of sharks on here but yeah i'm going to give my thumbs up to the eight-legged tentacle octopus in tentacle 1977 i have never seen it but the naught percent makes me want to see it even more oh uh, the poster is is uh you and i both agree when we talked about the, uh, this one movie in our beginning of Underworld or Terrors, Deep Rising. Yeah. Fun movie. And they have that Art Deco, you know, type poster for the cover. Mm-hmm. Tentacles has the same thing. It's been painted on. This painted oh, octopus, you know, and pulling down a ship, you know, with its with its one tentacle. It's a fantastic poster. Uh, but I put it on there because it's cheesy fun and terrible yeah. because yeah. it's not like that movie, uh, what is it, My Octopus Teacher, where something is... <laughs> I like teaching that. you. Yeah, I like that too. It's it's because this thing was teaching you about life and the cycle of life and how to exactly. appreciate everything. This thing wants you to get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> this thing does not want to be your friend. And if one thing can wrap around you and pull your head off, fuck it, put it on there. That's a terror for me. <laughs> All right, so your next terror. My next one is, and you've just reminded me of another film, which I'm going to add on at the end here. We might do eleven if we can squeeze it in. But my next one's going to be Lake Placid. Uh, you know, this is a good 20 years old now. Bridget Fonda, Bill Pullman, Oliver Platt, and Brendan Gleeson. Great cast for a creature feature. Um, directed by Steve Miner. I believe he did this immediately after he'd done Halloween H2O. And written by David E. Kelly, who we all know from... Well, I don't know from, but he was the writer of Ali McBeal, wasn't he, I believe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also the recent Blue Sky on, on, on Disney, which was an interesting show. And Stan Winston as well. We need to give a shout out for this. We heard a man was bit in half. It's a crocodile. Fifty feet. They came here to study it. Some kind of mutant. Nobody goes near the water. Oh yeah, I'm not going back anymore. They came here to save it. It's had a trap on the beach. Come and get it. The question is, where is he? Who will save them? Kelly. Watch out! Lake Placid. He didn't eat me. Because he just ate a cow, stupid. Rated R. Basically, a crocodile's terrorizing the locals, and they send up Bridget Fonda to examine a tooth. Brendan Gleeson plays the local sheriff, and Bill Pullman as well is one of the... I think he's like a, another local cop or something. The two of them are trying to track it down, and they track it down to an old lady's kind of riverside farmhouse or something isn't it where mm-hmm. she's lost her husband she tells everybody she's lost her husband but she doesn't say that a crocodile's taking him and they, she's feeding these crocodiles fucking cows do you remember that but they put the cows on the side of the fucking bay and they just jump out and anyway it's the one thing that i really like about this film is its sense of humor it's got a really smart dark sense of humor 
And it's good to see Bridget Fonda as well, because mm-hmm. you just don't see her anymore. I don't know what happened to her. I know she married Danny Elfman, but you just don't see her anymore, unfortunately. I thought Betty White in this movie was fantastic. This is the first time I ever saw her being, you know, this witty and telling the sheriff, if I had a dick, this is where I tell you to suck it. Th- yeah, this is... <laughs> I didn't know who it was, but because when I was watching it with my wife, she was saying, oh, that's from the... She's from the Golden Girls or something. Is that right? Yeah, I've never, right, I never yeah. saw the Golden Girls. So, yeah, Mary <laughs> Tyler Moore show, you know, all that. Ah, okay, and then she's she's coming out with all this stuff. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Oliver Platt going to uh, Gleason and say, "Hey, Sheriff, you're fat." <laughs> <laughs> like really pissing him off. And I remember that one part where the uh, grizzly bear is chasing. Yes. Oh, what a fantastic! I mean, it's it, the grizzly bear just runs out and and attacks them, and um, literally a few seconds later, this giant croc just jumps out of the water and pulls and drags the grizzly in. Now, this this was kind of the sort of early days of CG. They're damn good effects that they use in oh, this film. Yeah. I know, I know, it was kind of five or so, five years or so after Jurassic Park, but. For a movie of it's it's a reasonably low budget film. I mean, it's a, a studio picture. It's Fox, but it's a reasonably low budget, I guess. And I, I just think they really pull it off. But it's just a shame that the critics didn't think so. Forty four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. What were they thinking? Oh, it's it's, it's great it's, fun. It's good. Can't be fun. Yeah. yeah you know, and it's and if you think about it, kind of a happy ending at the end. Kind of. It is. And uh, and also that. <laughs> It's really short, I know that. It's like fucking an hour and 20 minutes. I think the credits hit after about an hour 15 or something. Yeah, yeah, one of the one of the great surprises about it, and I've, you know, I'm not this spoiler alert everybody. It's not until the dying frames of the movie that you realize there's actually two of them. And actually ki- to tell you the truth, there's actually more <laughs> towards the end. Is it? Yeah, the little that? tiny get the little tiny baby. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, the the alligators in the toilet at the end of get your feet out of there betty <laughs> feeding him bread that's that's gonna harm them yeah, that's not yeah. part of their diet but we think it's all over and just as it, you know the credits are about to hit another one jumps out of the water doesn't it it's like just it was twice as big as the other one as well it's kind of like the, the the kind of like the, the the mother maybe or something like that yeah maybe. yeah who knows it's the mate but i do agree with you lake placid is such fun but mm. the sequels after it eh. Yeah, they went a bit. It was it yeah. like Placid v Anaconda or something like that? It's just <laughs> fucking stupid. They made about five or six sequels. <laughs> Versus Jennifer Lopez and her marriages. <laughs> but yeah, Lake Placid, 1999, I believe. Check it out, folks. Great fun. So, my next one, now, Darren, I like this movie. I don't see it enough. I think it deserves a either 4K release or something with more special features. 1989's Leviathan. What is this? Leviathan. The Russians deliberately sank that ship to protect themselves. There is no record of its sinking. Maybe to protect us all. No report of its mission. It's not like anything I've ever seen before. Help me. It could have rested here for an eternity. Now, someone has unleashed the terrifying secret of Leviathan. Rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Oh, Peter Weller. Yeah, Peter Weller, Meg Foster, uh, Ernie Hudson, Daniel Stern. You know, a lot of memorable characters dealing with people getting infected, of course, you know, in some kind of... It's kind of like a rig. They're drilling for something underwater. And the doctor on here was played by, uh, what's his name, Richard Richard Crana from, from Rambo. Rambo. Yeah. Uh, he's the doctor. He discovers that they drank some of this vodka or something that was on a Russian sh- uh, ship, and they're all becoming infected, and this organism comes out, mutates with them to make one big monster underwater. Now, everyone says, it's aliens underwater, you know, for fuck's sake. Um, the monster looked pretty good. You know, the doctor scuttles the escape pod so no one could be affected up on land. And But I thought Leviathan is a, is a good... Again, another campy B horror movie that came number two at the box office that weekend, making only $15 million. Uh, I don't know what was released uh, before that. Uh, but that poster is fantastic, where it's all black, 
and a guy is holding a woman in a bikini with the escape pod being shot out. And yeah. it's, it's terrifying, but you know, I had to put the bike on me it. Of the, it kind of reminded me of the deep. Yes. The the, um, the the poster image. You remember the old Peter Benchley, Robert Shaw film? Yeah. The big diving yeah. suit and everything and going mm. up. Uh, you know, but I, I, I liked I liked Leviathan. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I have seen it. I saw it when it came out of the cinema back in 89 or whenever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I cannot remember it. I just remember being excited at the time because Peter Weller was in it. And, and also another film with him in it that I got excited about as well was Screamers because he was mm-hmm. in it. But yeah, Remember no, I'd punch you go Meg back. Foster in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, oh, I, can, I can barely, I honestly can barely remember it. I'm going to have to check that out again. But yeah, no, good shout. It's a movie that I completely forgot about. I think it was out around the same time as Deep Star 6, wasn't it? I yes. think it was, which yeah. is that kind of late 80s, which I was going to cover today, but I, I guess that'll be for another episode. But I think my final choice, although I might chuck in another one, as I said later on, is Jaws 2. There was once a creature that lived to kill. For one endless summer, it terrorized these waters. And then it was gone. And yet, in all the vast and unknown depths of the ocean, how could there have been only one? Mike is out there! The all-new Jaws. Two. Which I think is a really worthy sequel. Uh, yes. Know, not too many people, when the movie was being made, would agree with that. Um, I think it, it, it was a nightmare. The original director, a guy called um, John D. Hancock, um, worked on the movie for 18 months and then was fired mm. um, kind of a, a few weeks into the shoot. He developed it for so long. He developed the script with his wife and for all those of you that remember, it, it, it concerns the, the, the kids on the island and they go off boating and they get attacked by the shark. Brody has to go in and, 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 and save the kids. Now, the head of the studio at the time, a guy called Sidney Scheinberg, was married to Lorraine Gary, who plays Ellen Brody in the film. And he was obsessed with her being involved in the movie more. And he wanted her to go out with Brody to, to rescue the kids. And so the, the kind of the director was, was at loggerheads with the studio and it, they just couldn't find a way to make it work. So he, 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 he had to leave. And they brought in um, a, a French guy, I think it was, was, was Yannick Schwarek or something like that is his name, um, who, who came in and sort of rewrote the script and finished the movie off. Now, I think of the original director's vision, there is a minute or two in, the, in, in Jaws 2 that still remains of his. But unfortunately, everything that he, pretty much everything that he shot wasn't, wasn't used eventually. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a really ha- unhappy shoot from what I can gather. Uh, I've watched documentaries. I've read about this in various books and stuff. Roy Scheider didn't want to be there. Richard Dreyfuss was offered, but didn't want, but couldn't do it because of um, uh, Close Encounters. Spielberg didn't want to do it. And Robert Shaw was famously quoted... He saw the movie just before he died and said, <laughs> did this movie kill him? <laughs> he said, I'm glad I did not intervene in this piece of shit. <laughs> but, but I don't the, think it's a piece of shit. I think it's okay. I think it's it's the best sequel. The movie doesn't work without Roy in it, though. No, it doesn't. And he, he was dragged off of Deer Hunter to do this. He was he was going to be in Deer Hunter, which for him would have been fantastic. He was he was actually, from what I can gather, was was going to do Robert De Niro's role, uh, sorry Christopher Walken's role, Christopher Walken's role on Deer Hunter, and he was contractually obliged to do to do Jaws too, and and the studio flexed their muscles, and he got removed from Deer Hunter and was put onto Jaws two, which he hated, and Did he Roy- was just. Did he could have could he have gotten an Oscar for Deer Hunter? Well, this is possibly because Walken oh. did win, didn't he? Yeah, but it's all um, about the actor. It's not really about the character. It's about how you I don't portray know. him, right? But he is a he's a quality actor, you know. But Roy doesn't cry. <laughs> he's that type of man, and, and a local uh, in my area. He's actually from New Jersey. He's a, he's a yeah, you know, he's East Orange, and he looks like he's orange. Because uh, he was from East <laughs> or did Orange, did look like he was already. Did oh, so, uh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, Roy. 
But yeah, you know, and and he still can hold off on wearing those really high shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he he actually ended up fighting. He actually it actually came to blows with the director. Yeah, I think one of my one of my favorite and most people will know this anyway. But I, I always find this really funny is that the French title of Jaws was La Dent de la Mer, the Teeth of the Sea. And when Jaws 2 came out, they had to change the title because it was called La Dent de la Mer de. La Dent de la Mer de. Teeth of the Sea 2. But if you say it fast enough, La Dent de la Mer de, that means the teeth of shit. <laughs> Merde. Merde is shit in French. But anyway, um, yeah, Jaws 2, I think a really uh, worthy uh, entry to this. A great sequel. Always have fun with it. Always had fun with it as a kid. Uh, and it was briefly the highest grossing sequel of all time until Rocky II came along. Wow. I enjoy Jaws 2. It has, yeah. um, still has that great, you know, Jaws effect. You know, that's uh, that soundtrack, you know, dun 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 It still has it. Um, but it's almost like it's the, the score and it makes it fun, doesn't it? It's, it's John Williams. It's it's a great, you know. It's it's amazing they got him back without Spielberg being involved. But um, yeah, the the score's terrific. It's, it's 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 not exactly the same as the first Jaws movie, but it still works really well. And I think the yeah, shark I, in this one is bigger than Bruce. They 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 um they show too much of the shark in this film from an early too early. Do you know what I mean? There's a bit when its head gets set on fire and. Yeah, it was going to be a totally different, a totally different movie when the previous director had his hands on it, and there was some the same characters were kind of in it. But when you read into it, it's really interesting that it, originally one of the characters who's in the film, and I can't remember his name, was actually going to be Quint's son. Oh, stop it now! Yeah, yeah, no, seriously, <laughs> he's in the film as it stands. But initially, when they first started shooting, he was scripted as Quint's son. He's one of the kids who goes out on the raft. There's a whole episode with this, Frank. It might be interesting to touch on it one day because there are there are some fascinating stuff about Jaws too. If you if you really dig dig into it, there's there's some there's some really cool stuff. And and apparently, you know, Dreyfus actually offered to come for a weekend to 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 shoot a cameo for the film, but the director just turned around and said, "Look, if it's, if all you can offer us is you know, yeah, two days or whatever, yeah. it's just yeah, yeah, it's, it's just no point." Um, it caused all sorts of, there was all sorts of trouble with it. And, um, but fortunately, a 30 million budget as well back in, um, back in 1977 when they shot it. Mm. That's like a hundred and hundred and twenty million dollar picture now. But it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly worthy of being on this definitely, list. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But what's your honorable mention? Because I'm going to throw one in there too, if you're going to do it. Honorable mention is, is something that I think one of our um, listeners uh, pointed out last time was Orca, which we never, which we never mentioned. Were you going to say Orca? I was about to say Orca. I was about to say Oh, well, that's that. good. The ancient Romans called him Orca or Kynos, Latin for bringer of death. He is without challenge the most powerful animal on the globe. The killer whale. Orca has 48 teeth, set in two impressive rows. In some respects, the orca's intelligence may be even superior to man's. They remain loyal to one mate for life. As parents, they are exemplary, better than many human beings. And like human beings, they have a profound instinct for vengeance. So getting to the point of Orca, since if we're going to talk about a fish, we're going to talk about a mammal really quick. This movie is about a killer whale that's dead set on revenge, isn't it? Yeah. I I, I'm, I need to look at, into this a little bit more because the, the opening moments of this film really upset me because... It's it's disturbing for is me. Is it real? Well. Is it, it real? I, I don't I, know. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. And I don't think the uh, Richard Harris... Uh, you know who's who's. Let, let's just say he's he's a poor man's Quint. Uh, <laughs> he is. That's that's probably the best way to put it. But he plays this this very well. But it's it's a really a sad movie. It's Dino it's terribly sad. Again. Dino De Laurentiis again, isn't it? So the opening scenes we see um, a whaling boat catch uh, a killer whale. Yeah, an orca, and it it gets slaughtered, doesn't it? The, the whale, the mother gets slaughtered, 
And as she's been slaughtered, the baby, a baby pops out and the fucking baby then gets, does the baby get slaughtered as well? I can't remember, uh, but just now because it's actually been prematurely birthed. It oh, that's right. Dies. Yeah. And then yeah, they just, yeah. they just flush it over the, the edge. Yeah. Uh, but the, but the father sees well, all this, <laughs> sees it all and then decides to wreak havoc on the, um, on the local fishing village. And in particular, um, Richard Harris. Who he saves for last. But it's kind of like, it, it, I mean, who have we got in here? We've got um, Richard Harris, Bo Derek, uh, Will Sampson, who I think was in, um, wasn't he in Polter one of the Poltergeist films as well or something? He was in part two. Yeah, Poltergeist two, yeah, yeah. Um, directed by Michael Joseph Anderson, who did, um, who did the Dam Busters, um, Around the World in 80 Days, and also Logan's Run. I don't know if you've seen mm -hmm. Logan's Run. Mm -hmm. Great film. And it only died a couple of years ago. He died in 2018, age 98. That's a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, they the, the the whale basically tears up the local town, doesn't it? It's it's a kind of like a fishing a, a fishing village, and he just kind of destroys it. And so it entices three people to go out in the water. Oh, Charlotte Rampling as well, wasn't it? Um, who was in there? They they basically go off to try and kill the whale. Um, but the whale's too smart for them. He's a bit like the shark in Jaws 4. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the wrong movie. But yeah, there's the, doesn't Bo Derek lose a leg in homage to Jaws? She does. Yeah, that, she, but, she, uh, but it's a leg in a pot. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a, ca a cast on, <laughs> a hasn't cast she? On it, yeah. yeah. It's already been fixed. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, there's one thing that gets to me about this movie is that after, you know, the orca takes his revenge out, he absolutely feels terrible about the whole thing. Yeah. You see him cry. The the, the whale. Yeah, the orca. You yeah, see oh, him, yeah, you know, yeah. Tear absolutely. up. You know, yeah. he, he didn't want to do this. He didn't want to, he didn't want to go after these people, but he was so dead set on killing those or basically maiming or torturing those that actually made his life a living hell. But he, he, it's, an, it's an accident, really, isn't it? He's trying to... Well, not an accident, but he's trying to get the male orca, isn't he? And he, acts, he mistakenly sort of harpoons the pregnant female, doesn't he? That, that's yeah. that's what, what, what's happened. And, yeah, they end up going to... What, oh, the, it's the Strait of Belle Isle, apparently. Wherever. Wherever. <laughs> yeah, which is at Newfoundland. Okay. They end up in Newfoundland. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're, there's a kind of... Uh, you know, man v beast sort of dying ten minutes. Moby Dick and, thing, yeah, yeah, it's the Moby Dick thing, and and, and and it doesn't end well for Richard Harris. But you know what? It's a, it's not a bad Jaws ripoff at all. No, it's it's the thing is though, it's one of those movies I watched one or twice in my lifetime, but I don't want to care to visit it again because of the emotional mm. opening. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's, 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 it's gut wrenching. It it does look too good. Does that opening sequence to be fake? For 1977, <laughs> you know, but it is. Uh, but but I, those were trained, you know, whales, of course, you know, and uh, but yeah, it's it's either though something is could be fake, and, and I'm sure they were protected and everything. It just becomes too real, too hmm. real. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, but I think it deserves an honorable mention because talking about it forever it would be <laughs> gut wrenching and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but so that's it. That's it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. You know our our quick fire of underwater terrors too. Uh, we will see you next time. We'll have a special guest on, uh, continuing with our cool, cruel summers of 1981. And uh, that special guest, we're not going to say who it's going to be, and uh, you're going to have to wait for that. But Darren, any last closing words? No, I think it'd be interesting to hear people's thoughts and feedback. We always like to hear whether you're enjoying what we're doing. Um, let us know some of your favorite underwater terrors. Um, what would you like seeing added to this list? Because we'll probably revisit this. There's so many movies that we can touch on. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in a few months or so we can we can do an Underwater Terrors 3. Um, but yeah, let us know what we're missing out on and uh, what you'd like adding to the list. Sounds good. And as always, stick to the roads. And the best of luck. Mm -hmm.